like we'll call this meeting to order the Central Vermont Career Center School District board meeting. Um, we will note that we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven. Mm -hmm. we, have seven. we have a quorum, and we will um, call this meeting to order and begin. Do we have any guests? Any guests online that would like, like to be acknowledged? <laughs> we'll go forward from there. Um, our norms and agreements are basically very simple, that we are civil, we are polite, we discuss, we come to conclusions, and we are extraordinary human beings. <laughs> Because we're here. All right. That's Amy <laughs> We are we are public comments and correspondence. Um, any public comment from anyone? No. Any correspondence, Jody? We have no correspondence to the board that we have received, so we covered that. Now we have our agenda. Um, is there anyone? Any who has any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, we need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. All right. I need a second. Second. Okay. Who? Uh, Jim. Okay, we'll we'll give it to Jim here. Okay, and then um, before we go forward, we need to introduce our newest member to the board, and would you like to introduce yourself and who, where are you from? Sure, I'm uh, Patrick Welly, I'm from Middlesex. I'm from the uh, board, the um, Washington Unified Central School Board there, so that, that's where my, my seat comes from. Um, I'm a geologist by training, a scientist, and I'm happy to be on the, the board and, and, and help with the career center. And we are very glad to have you, Patrick Welly. What sort of tests can you do on properties for us? <laughs> 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 yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah. We'll put you to work. Okay. <laughs> okay. And welcome. So Thank now you. we need um, all those in favor of this current agenda, please respond by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Now the consent agenda. We have minutes from the August 12th and the August 19th um, meeting. Has everyone taken a gander at those? Mm -hmm. Any, all right. We have, um, do we have any new hires? I just wanted to make note that the August 19th meeting was warned for the 7.30 time slot in the morning, and we were not able to get a quorum then. And so we gathered people at noon, but then so I'm not sure if those are actual real minutes, since it wasn't a warrant okay. meeting. Okay. So I wanted, what that group did when we came together was to say, yes, we can hire Annie as our Embedded Academics Humanities, but I would like this board in this warrant meeting to up affirm that decision, just so that we do have it okay. legally done. Does everyone understand what we're doing? We, yes. had, we had a kind of an instant <clears throat> meeting so that we could give the embedded academics teacher a contract in a timely fashion and have her start the year. Where we want to just reaffirm that that's what we did and that is the person that we really want to hire. So um, we'll have that on this consent agenda and that's under the new hires. So the new hire is to, re the, the essence of that is to reaffirm the hiring of the embedded academics teacher. Very good. Um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move that we Jana? approve the consent agenda and that we update the hiring of the embedded academic. Okay, very good. I need a second to approve the consent agenda and approve and reaffirm the uh, hiring of our embedded academic teacher. I need a second. Second. Okay, thank you, Patrick. All right. 
And then um, I need a motion. I need uh, any discussion. Any discussion? Just From, one thing. Is yes. she enjoying it? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, good. good. So it was an OSHA time training today. Okay. All right. Good, good meeting. So um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. I have a quick question for Patrick that has just crossed my, yeah. my brain. Um, we require an oath of office for this. Have you signed your oath of office? No. Okay. No. He, but you have for your have for Washington, Washington Central. Central. Yes, okay, so yep. then we're good. Okay. All right, just want to just Thanks. just wanted yeah. to make make a check there. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we can confirm we that we you are now officially a member of this board. <laughs> 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 yes, that's right. Yes. All right. Um, board reports. Do we have any students reporting? We should be finding them soon. Okay, good. Not yet. Next yes. meeting. Good, thank okay. you. Uh, the program presentation is the program quality proposal for future presentations. Um, okay. Work in progress? Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a work in progress. Um, I think we can all chime in. We, j we just had a program quality meeting, and what we're trying to hone in on is when our instructors come to the board meeting that they can have an idea of what it is that the board actually wants to hear from them so they're not coming into that meeting cold and we landed on a checklist sort of idea that each instructor could have this checklist have they covered various items and um, on that were such things as the report of successes from their program, what the students are learning, what the students are practicing out in the field, and where they go when they graduate. Um, so what, what their opportunities are. We might want to hear what the instructor's goals are, whether they are introducing any new materials, whether they need any new materials to meet those goals. And as far as our teaching is concerned, if we have clusters of, of classes, such as the, the health um, area, what is it? Health sciences. Health sciences um, and the construction, trades, plumbing, electrical, those cluster areas, how are they working together? What are their goals to work together? And then, of course, um, anticipated outcomes, and then hear from the faculty anything that we as a board can do to assist them. So we're going to take this list, um, the program committee, at our next meeting and look at it and really finalize it. So what we would probably ask of the, the big board, us now, if you have anything that you would like to hear from the instructors as they come to the board to speak about their programs, let us know so that we can amplify this list that we brainstormed about getting the reporting system organized. Alice? Yes, ma'am. That was excellent. It was excellent. It was stellar reporting. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I would add, um, we talked about support with the legislature. What can yes. we do? I just would add that one yep. thing, but I thought you did a fabulous job. Anything else from anyone? Supportive committee. Yeah. Looks like we have Jason and Scott now, too. Yes. Okay. Greetings, Jason and Scott. <laughs> yes. But again, anything, and if, and if you're out um, working in the field preparing to uh, plow snow or whatever it is that you might be thinking about at this season of the year, and you come up with some idea that you might like to hear from instructors, just again, shoot us an email and we'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not <laughs> so, I'll take back everything I said about you. <laughs> 
strike that from the minutes. <laughs> no snow. No snow. Okay. Um, anything else that any other members of the committee would like to add to that? No. One minute. Okay. Very good. All right. So now we have committee reports. Facilities. Are you out there? Yeah. We're out there. <laughs> so we test fit our buildings on our parcels. Yeah. The two parcels that we've discussed in the past. Um, we didn't invite the, the Valley President, President of Detroit to call in tonight because we figured okay. we could handle it. <laughs> Joey and I could handle it. But, um, so we've got those kind of laid out. We've got pros and cons right. for each site and each kind of building layout. Not the inside of the building, but right. sort of the outside of the building. And um, so we're going to review pros and cons again because we've talked through a few more that have come up in the, in the conversations. Um, more than what's in the paper? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the next step is we need to do a um, wetlands delineation, delineation on the airport road property mm -hmm. um, for a couple of reasons. One, to see if there's what we really have for expansion room if we wanted to put in fields or anything mm -hmm. like that in the future. And then second, for maybe possibly putting the building in a different location than where we originally right. were looking. In, that, in that acreage. Yeah, on but on the same, on the acreage, but on, not so close to the road where yeah. we feel yeah. like the real estate's gonna be prime money. Mm -hmm. Could we move it somewhere else on the property so we could pay less, but we need access. So mm -hmm. um, we need wetlands coordination done so we can figure out if we can get access. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of in a, in a, in a nutshell where we're at. Okay. Um, Does that mean U32 is off the table no, now? No. They're both still. No, but we would have to engage with Washington, Washington Central mm -hmm. and, and see what the next steps would be if that is to continue mm -hmm. to remain on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we need to. Unless get this board directs otherwise, right? Right. But we don't have it. I it's, think it's, we're in a spot, and we've talked about this a lot, where we're sort of feeling like, how much further do we go? Because there's the talks of the, the reconfig for right. Washington Central. Right. Um, there's just a lot of unknowns right now, so right. how far do we take it? But we, we really, I think we need to do the, the wetland process, mm -hmm. so at least we know, mm -hmm. at least we know in our heads mm -hmm. what viable. options we have there. Because it could property. be off the table if it's not viable? Well, I think it's viable anyway, but yeah. I think we have a couple of different options we can look at if, depending on what that comes back with. 400 acres. Oh. And so yeah. there may be other options. Right. There might be other pieces okay. of it we take yeah. instead of that one. Is, so. is the plan that the facilities committee would make a recommendation to the board mm -hmm. as to which site that you thought was? That's the plan. Uh, could you tell me the, a little bit more of the U32 question, and, and maybe I can answer like the, some timeline stuff for the consolidation discussion? It comes up from bigger uh, discussions. So your board chair received a letter, just as all of the Zenu schools did, from Alice, um, and from this board that you're also part of, that basically said, we're doing this project and we realized that with declining enrollment, it might be time to start talking about a regional high school. None of the boards have formally responded to that. Um, we think, I know that a couple of boards have discussed it, but we've gotten no formal response. So there's, there's that idea of, is there an opportunity to consolidate high schools? Some of our sending schools, all of our sending schools, what does that look like? And then there's, what you're doing as a district to make decisions. Yeah. And then there is, if we were to move forward with the U32 site, the next step would be to do is some core samples. And the current position of that is right in some sports fields that are being used right now. So the timing isn't mm -hmm. appropriate for us to do that. Right. But we also haven't engaged with your board to know if, if that's even, okay. is your board even willing to consider us being there? 
forward before we can move that piece. Right. Scott has hand up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm curious. So I know we talked about it in the Montpelier um, uh, Roxbury um, board meeting uh, maybe two meetings ago. And yeah, I'm curious. You, you said there's no formal response, but what 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 informal response um, have you have you had or at least the what's the, the tone of the informal responses? The folks who have responded or talked to me about it have said that their board knows it's time to engage in that conversation and is interested in talking about it. That's it. So it's been positive, but it's about one person from each board except for Harwood. I have not heard anything from Harwood. Should Sorry, Guy, uh, just really quickly, should we be encouraging an uh, official response? Because it sounds like you're getting at least positive unofficial responses. I think if it's an official response, we can try to coordinate a meeting. But we don't really know whether we should take that next step to coordinate it without no. I mean, the other official way is for each of you that are part of a sending board to give us that information like you just did. So Jana could tell us where Twinfield was at with it, and Patrick might be able to tell us if Washington Central addressed it or talked about it. So, I mean, that could be formal, presenting back to us from your boards. Well, I have a board meeting tomorrow night, so I certainly plan to ask the question. So I just want to know, do I have to wait for the next board meeting or can I just write to you and say, to Alice? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. To, to kind of just piggyback on the defining enrollment thing, it's because we anticipate we'll be able to double our, hopefully double our enrollment here. So right now we have two, over 200 students. Mm -hmm. And if we build this new center, no matter where it is, we will likely have 400 right. students. So we will we'll be taking, we'll be causing for the decline. Yeah. We will be, yeah, yeah they'll be coming to us. Right. We hope. Yep. Because what, what was our, not our enrollment, but our interest last year, our application? Over 400 yeah. again, and mm -hmm. we have 223. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that, that 400 number is a realistic number. Yes, yeah. Hey, uh, Jody, for the kids that, say, aren't getting in, the students that aren't getting in or whatnot, what is the, do you have a breakdown of what they want to study, whether it's cosmetology or auto mechanics or? Yep. We'll have, I'll have the enrollment data next meeting, and I can show you that. Because I Guy, think that if, if the trends are going in certain directions, it may impact this whole discussion about the shape and size and what's in the building, et cetera, et cetera. That's all. Guy, you have your hand up. Have a question? Yeah, I just, uh, just want to add a couple things. Uh, you know, Dave Delcor is on the, on the call. I just want to commend him for a very accurate uh you know, article on, on the meeting and, you know, thank him and thank Jody for, you know, for being cautious because there are things that Jody is dealing with that, you know, are uncertain. And so this is a, um, a moving ball, so to speak. But I have to say as a committee member, it was certainly exciting to like sit there for a couple of hours and just dream and like go, <laughs> What are the possibilities, you know, as we take a look at what's best for kids and also being a little frustrated knowing that it's, you know, it's, it's going to, you know, potentially create some problems. Um, but I think those are good problems to talk about, you know, given what's going on in education. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting times, but, you know, it's uh, we'll wait and see. 
and we could still use some more committee members. <laughs> so, I don't know if you're interested, Patrick, but... <laughs> Is it okay to come to, like, just one meeting? You can come whenever you want. Okay. That would be fabulous. And it's really great because they kind of go over, at the beginning, they usually start off by saying, this is where we're coming from, remember where, right. you know, and now right. here we are. Yeah. Oh, and, the, and the dream goes on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Um, program quality, we kind of covered that already uh, up above. And so we're up to superintendent's report. So I shared with you kind of the start of school and how the teachers came in and then our students. And we had a Steph's class actually took a field trip last week. So the first field trip has gone out. Um, and Giuliano, our design and fabrication instructor, doesn't have a program right now, was able to work with them. That's their first study. So they're, he's already marketing to our exploratory kids. Oh, good. Um, the beautiful thing is after he worked with them and, and uh, you know, he came on the field trip, um, the kids really liked having him there, and while they were working on their clay sculptures, it was great to see him walk around and give them professional techniques in order to make their sculptures a little bit better. We saw from the first day of introducing Design and Fab, we only had two students raise their hand because they were interested, and then when we asked again, how many of you guys are interested, we have like five or six who are interested. Wow. Oh, that's good. great. So he's excellent. He was a lot of fun to have him there. He um, went to U32's open house, and he has been commandeered to help with a J-term project. They have a three-day day J-term between their two semesters. Right. And so we think we're going to get some students from there to go to the Granite Museum and work with him in January for three days, so that'll be really cool. And he's trying to get involved with our teachers across our Sunday schools to Excellent. work with them and, and to do some trainings. And then, as always, like you, when you came in, if you came here, and if you haven't come here, you need to just drive in. Um, you see, we have a big presence. We're going to slap <laughs> a big old sticker on that that machine. That's uh, the air exchanger for our welding program. Um, they started it up today, so today was startup day. Friday um, is our walkthrough with Project WorkSafe, and hopefully, it gets approved, and we can kids can start using that space. Sweet. So they're excited about getting in there. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yes. Hey. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> Guy? Yeah, quick question, Jody. I saw some activity at the um, at the housing piece on Hill Street. Do you have any yes. update on that by any chance? Yeah, good good question. That came in after I'd finished this. Um, we are doing, the, they're putting the walls together here in the tech, right in the building trades space. And on September 21st, I think it is, so two weeks from last Saturday, they're going to put those walls together on the State House lawn. <laughs> um, so our kids are doing OSHA right now for building trades, and that's going to be what they're working on in the next two weeks to help get that going. So um, the Habitat for Humanity volunteer, Bruce Landry, he has been here. Um, they delivered wood today, so I know it's, it's about ready to get going. I think our co-op students were in today, and so they helped unload that and get it sorted out. Great. Did you, David, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he just sets up his name thing to scare us. <laughs> Are you frightening us, Mr. Delbrook? Nah. No. But anyhow. Um, so we'll, we'll carry on from there. Um, anything else in, in your report, superintendent's report? All right. So item six, we're talking along here. Um, yeah. This may be a little bit more um, involved. We had, we were working with the Vermont School Boards Association to do a policy audit. audit which basically means that their staff, which consists of a policy specialist and an attorney, yeah. would take our policy manual, look at it, see what is acceptable, what is unacceptable, and what is needed. So 
they've been, VSBA has been doing that. Jody and I have met with them on a couple of occasions to get the feel of what needs to be done. And as we're moving along, there are some, there's some new information that has come to us, and then there's just the needed um, reviews of our policy and our policy manual to make it acceptable. So one of the first things that was pointed out to us is that um, even though we are not a local education agency, local education agency is, is really the, the community school, the K-12, that's the, the formal name for, for that. And career centers are not a local education agency because we do not have a K-12 program. But the requirements for policy are that you need to have those K-12 policies in your policy manual, even though you're not an LEA. So <laughs> does everyone understand that? Yeah. I'm lucky I understand it. <laughs> but but, um, but that, that's what we have, have come to. So what we need to do is we need to go back because we pulled all those K-12 policies out of our policy manual. We need to go back and put them back in and in the order that they're supposed to be. So that's something that we'll be working on to get those um, under undertaken. And then we have, these are required policies. So to explain required policies. First, to back up a little bit, the Vermont School Boards Association is not an agency that can designate required and what's not required. What they do is they look at the statutes and the rules that are set by the legislature and determine from that what policy is absolutely required because it has to correspond with a particular statute or a particular rule. And that's how they come up with what you have to have in your policy manual. And that's what they have done for us is determined that these are required policies. So Jody, you wanna pick it up from there? Yeah, so you see the letter, the cover memo from, um, the, from, Alice, from David to Alice that has first a table on it of what the required policy is, what ours is called, if it's just in case it changes, and then whether or not action is required. So the ones on the agenda are the ones that require action, including one that just has a small typographical error. When you move past the packet piece where it has that table, you'll see each one of them is, is differentiated, the, differentiated out with exactly what we need to change. And, or their recommendations. So I know that um, some of it, we don't have the same definitions for some of the pieces. So the VSBA creates model policies, and we edited some of these when we came in, or we, or Barry had, because a lot of them we just moved over from Barry and, and retitled. Right. So some of them ask that we use some different language and fix it. Some are missing a few pieces. So sometimes it says it's organized differently, but it's still clear, so it's okay, it's acceptable. And so basically what I did was just to include all of these recommendations from the VSBA and all of the policies we have, plus or minus the, for example, C3, we didn't have transportation. That mm -hmm. one is just the model policy at, with our header on it. I didn't add anything. I didn't even delete the notes from the VSBA on that. And I'm sorry that this is not numbered. So we just have everything as it currently is, what's adopted, and then the recommended pieces. Mm -hmm. No changes have been made on them because I wanted you to have the opportunity to take a look and decide. I know, Alice, in our meeting, you asked, do we have to have the same definitions? And we don't. There are recommendations for it, and they said if we choose to stay with our own language, that we should have our legal counsel vet it. So the next question for the board is, do you, should we go through these each individually, 
or because we do not have a, a, a separate policy committee, should we go through each one of these individually, or do we just want to accept the um, recommendations of the Vermont School Board Association for those changes? And, and in question. that case, sure. then I would make those updates and we would bring it for our first reading next time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are, are there situations in which you feel that our language is better than the SBA's, or, or uh, at least that we would prefer to have it? Or, I mean, is, is there anything that, that says, you know, we shouldn't just adopt their language? Well, for example, B3, in this one it says uh, employee responsibilities in this section, Central Vermont Career Center School District has added the range of disciplinary measures the superintendent or board may take against an employee for violation of this policy. And we've added the superintendent may develop and implement this. So those things are not part of their model policy, they could be removed. I, I guess I was thinking more like where our the definition and our word choice is different. Do we care? Are there, are there places that... Tobacco, we, we provide more specificity. Mm -hmm. So I think if we want to keep those specifics in there, then that, it makes sense to just send them through legal counsel okay. and see what concerns do they have about it. Yeah, I had two... Um, uh, two things I, I read through this earlier today, and I don't know if this rises to uh, something that legal counsel should, should look at or just talk about it, is the age discrimination one. Um, Could you say what number? This is B5. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, it struck me that the, the edit that's being suggested is to raise the threshold of age discrimination to 40, um, but I was curious uh, why there needs to be an age at all where it's okay to discriminate by age. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Basically, what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. It applies to anyone who's a citizen, right? 18 or older, mm -hmm. and but we put a 40 on, and so it shouldn't. And then, we shouldn't have that. And I think we just take the age off because, like, right. if, even if you're saying somebody's too young to do something, that's not okay. Right. But I don't. <laughs> you don't need a threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The other one was um, C13. I think the preferred wording is, is people people experiencing homelessness, mm -hmm. so that you're not putting value on it. So I'd just suggest that change. But is it homelessness or housing insecurity? Sure. Yeah. I think yeah. That's in the yeah, I think that's the title, and that's the title of their policy. Okay. Does that make sense? No, students are homeless. Students are homeless, right? Experiencing. So flipping that around. That comes from the McKinley. From McKinley. Right. Guy? Yeah, uh, you know, just a comment. Uh, I'm a, uh, a fan of not reinventing the wheel, number one. And number two is because of Jody's new position in the, you know, in the world of Career Center, I guess my question would be, have the other Career Centers been, you know, faced with the, with the same thing? And you know, um, you know, what do they have and what have they done? Uh, so that's just my comment. The majority of them are still with a regular school district, and so they have whatever the districts are, right? So it's just the four of us 
that have something different. And they have many of the same policies, I would, I would say. It's sometimes hard to find their policies to make that comparison. And ours have been updated more recently than some. It's interesting you bring that up. Mm -hmm. I think the majority of if there's 17 career and tech ed centers, 13 of them are under their district, the LEA piece, so they don't have to do this. So I guess, I guess my other comment is uh, these are policies that we didn't think would be uh, pertaining to our district when we formed the district. Just some of them. So Only the ones that it says are missing. Right. So, you know, again, um, you know, there probably aren't policies that can affect us a whole lot. And so I would trust the people that, you know, from the school board association that have worked on this and developed, you know, model policies. But, you know, that's just my, you know, my thought. So I'm hearing update as recommended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my second thought is we paid them a lot of money to be members, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards take their recommendation unless we're more specific already in the policy than mm -hmm. leave it. I mean, that's kind of where I'm leaning, but mm -hmm. they don't seem to have a problem with it. They mention it. Mm -hmm. So basically what, um, it looks like we're leaning toward is keep what we have written as our own and accept the uh, any suggestions from the VSBA on the other um, policies. policies with suggested uh, updates or recommendations. Am I hearing that correctly? No? So well, I think what I what I heard that is that if it has greater specificity, the, if ours has greater ours, specificity, so keep ours. then we want to keep that. Yeah. Right. Right. But we want but to make the other. But the other recommendations. recommendations. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. So keep ours. And did we want to say students who are homeless rather than homeless students? Yes. Okay. Experiencing. Experiencing. Oh, housing and security, housing and security is, what is what is commonly. And, and for those policies that we don't have at all, we're just going to use the VSBA. Yeah. 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 And my other question is, um, we don't need to have any action on this tonight, but when the, when the policies come back to us as a board, um, we would have to either take them as a group or go over them individually. So we need to think about that for the future, because this right at the moment is a, um, is a discussion. So if, is there any more discussion on our policy update? From anyone. So we don't have to make a motion to make those changes. Um, to direct, just direct it. To direct yeah. the direct yeah. yeah. And then it will they'll come back again. All right. But we do have um, the equity policy. We have a second reading on the equity policy, which was um, Equity is a recommended policy, so it'll be a, they're looking at our recommended policies next. Um, and they noted that the equity policy at the state level or the VSBA model is being updated, and so they're going to potentially use ours as a resource. Nice. Okay. Well done. 
So do we need a motion on our equity policy? Yes. Uh, so we need a second reason, reading need, and adoption. Yes. So um, on the equity policy, we need a motion. Um, is there any question about the equity policy that anyone has any questions about? Hearing none, I need a motion to accept the equity policy as written. So I'll make sure. So I'll second that. Okay, Jana and Guy. Any discussion? Uh, just congratulations on uh, we have developed a model policy. <laughs> yes. Thank you to our equity scholar and residents for leading that work. Will you tell them how much we appreciate them? Yes. Okay. So, um, hearing no further discussion, um, I need a um, a vote. All those who approve of our equity policy, please confirm by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Hearing no opposition, the motion carries and equity policy is approved. And we'll go in our book. Right. Now the exposure management plan is the next, and that's for a first reading. That's um, quite involved. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about our exposure management plan? Jody, do you want to give some background on it? Um, this basically was the work of my health sciences team to update this policy um, a couple of years ago when MedPro was moving to phlebotomy and we knew that we were going to do live draws in the program. We wanted to make sure we had a strong bloodborne pathogens mm -hmm. exposure control plan. Um, the reason it's coming back to you is because there's a plan at the end of it. It says annual plan review. It says that all of us, including the board, will review this. And we brought it to program quality earlier today and said, does this really make sense that it comes to the board every year, especially if there are small changes um, or if there are no changes? If there are small changes, it might make sense too. Um, so there are a couple of things that we were looking at regarding who gets trained, whether or not we've gotten everything done. All the kids get the training in, as part of their safety training in every program for bloodborne pathogens. Um, so we're thinking we need to take the board out of this review plan and unless we have unless to update it. Yeah. And then we need to bring it to you because it's an updated policy. Good. Any questions or concerns about that plan? Does everybody understand it as to why the, the board um, involvement, the annual, annual board involvement is being um, reduced from the, the, the plan? Because it's really not necessary unless there is something um, significant. Everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. Everybody clear? I'm also okay with taking this and making that edit and a couple of other changes that are slight, just edits of language mm -hmm. in this and bringing it back for first reading next time to update those pieces. Okay. okay. If that's preferred. That's good. If that makes sense. All right, so why don't we do that just so that we're absolutely on point with clarity. So what we will do that is we'll make the edits and bring it back for next month for a vote by the board, for adoption by the board of first reading. All right. Very good. Moving forward. Um, the VSBA, um, VSA fall conference. We have been notified that the Vermont School Boards Association is having their fall conference in October and we are offering it to I think we just need to know who's gonna who's gonna vote on our behalf. Okay. At the Visbit meeting. That's what's the what's the date of it? October 25th. It's a Friday. Yep. First of all, we need to know who's going. You know, I'm going. You're going? Yes. Are you allowed to be our resident? 
Well, the, board, the board has to. Are you yes if you're not the visit rep for Barry? Um, I am not going on behalf of Barry. I am going on behalf of the Career Center. Great. Oh, that's great. Awesome. There are other folks from Barry who are going as Barry reps. I'm not sure. It seemed like just yesterday. It is. <laughs> so, anyone else interested in participating on the 25th of October? Okay. Can I move that Alice be our visit rep for uh, casting our vote? Is that what I said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The SBA meeting on October 25th. A second. Um, yeah. Well, any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? All those in favor of having uh, the chair be the <coughs> VISBIT rep for voting purposes at the um, annual meeting on October 25th, 2024? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Opposed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion, motion carries. Then. <laughs> Thank you all, and I will do my best to represent us well. Thank you. Would, uh, will we get the, the slate, the meeting before, like we did last time? We should. I haven't received anything from BSBA in advance. And, and right. How the board wants to vote on. Yeah. There was just that one that they had. There was going to be amendments, so I couldn't vote. We couldn't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. that was <laughs> Right. Our next obligation is to um, go into executive session for the purpose of um, discussing the superintendent's contract um, and we need a motion to enter into executive session with all board members and Superintendent Emerson for that purpose of discussing the superintendent contract. I need that motion. So move. So, Patrick, thank you. I need a second. Second. Terry, very <laughs> good. Any um, discussion? Of course. No discussion. Um, all those in favor of moving into executive session? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposition? Session now? Okay. Are you going to send this to me? I will, but somebody needs to read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, yes, I, move. I do. The parties to the above mentioned employment agreement, <laughs> the agreement, agreed to amend paragraph 8 of the agreement to include the following additional language. Alternatively, employee Jody may, with the composite. What if you say, I move to amend the superintendent's? Okay, I move to amend the agreement of paragraph 8 to include the following language. Alternatively, Jody may, with the consent of the employer, use the funds identified for mentoring services, $4,000, to pay for credits toward doctoral degree. The payment shall be on a reimbursement basis and will be for only grades of B or better. Okay, Jana has made a motion. I need a second. A motion to. A second. All right, Patrick seconds it, and that is. Jason has his hand up. I think. Jason, you have a question. I can't hear you guys. Can you hear me? I can't hear them. I can hear you, Jason. Okay. So we're the same then. Yeah, I can't hear the the group that's there live. Same. 
Yeah. I think they've written us off. <laughs> I'm gonna, I gotta roll momentarily. I'm not from Chicago, but I can vote for you. Hello. <laughs> can you hear us now? Yes. Okay. We, we have a motion that, by Jana and a second by Patrick to, um, Change agree to amend paragraph eight of the agreement to include the following language that alternatively Jody may with the consent of the board use the funds identified from mentoring services the four thousand dollars to pay for credits toward a doctoral degree the payment shall be on a reimbursement basis and shall only be for grades of B or better we have a motion by Jana and a second by Patrick. Um, any discussion to that motion? Any discussion here? No, nope. hearing none. All right. All those in favor of adopting that uh, that language, please aye. say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion carries. Oh, Patrick seconded. Yeah. Yes, I have that here. Oh, the no. second All right. time. Motion carries. Okay. I got a roll. See you all next time. Bye. See you later, Jim. All right. How did you get to do something? So, um, our next is to adjourn. We need a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. All right. Jenna. Jana. Jana. Second Lyman. Lyman. Adjourn. I hate to I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but I think we skipped a, an agenda or item or two. Yeah. Eight what? and nine. All right. Oh, oh future agenda items. Thank you, Jason. Do we have any um do we have any Our suggestions Scott. for future agenda items? Any suggestions for future agenda items? Well, budget. We can get we can get rid of the board development and goals. Yeah. Right. Um, I wonder because we don't have a finance committee right now, and the board is going to be acting as that. I think budget should be a discussion okay. point from October forward. <laughs> we also okay. said we wanted to review the governor's letter. Yep. All right. The governor's letter that we all received this afternoon, we'll put that on a future agenda. Like before we start the budget. Right. Right. Yeah. So that gets a number one budget, so, too. Anything else? All right, we'll add those to the budget and the governor's letter. We'll add that. And are we adjourning again now? Well, um, we're going to conduct. Um, do we have any um, reflections or summaries? How did we do? Yeah, very efficient. Okay. Good job, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you. And now, Did we go all back? right, now we're ready to adjourn. Okay, so I move we adjourn Second. and Lyman yeah. seconded it. All right. And now it's 7.08. All right. Any discussion of our adjourn, our motion to adjourn? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, we are now officially adjourned.